Hi, my name's Kelly Kirk, and I'm going to talk this lesson about uh, lesson plans. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, lesson plans on this one. This particular lesson is designed for level one instructors, so we're not going to go quite as in depth as we would if it was level two folks. Um, more experienced instructors end up doing, or generally end up, are required to do a little more. Uh, lesson plans. So uh, in this particular lesson we're going to talk about uh, what lesson plans are. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the needs assessment and the components of a lesson plan, uh, everything from your assessment through your goals, uh, cognitive objectives. We've already talked a little bit about objectives as well, but uh, cognitive, psychomotor, and affective uh, domain objectives. Uh, motivation, we'll talk about that as well. We're also going to talk about the components of the needs assessment. I'll just briefly hit on that. That is uh, something a lot of us are not going to have to worry about. So most of the folks that we teach, the a lot of the needs assessments already been done. Little components of it uh, we do, but we don't necessarily do as much of it unless you are like an instructional designer where you're actually designing an initial course that uh, you have to decide who that course is for. We'll also talk about uh, some of the evaluations and evaluating the audience and uh, we can do that, some of that we can do through our needs assessment. Uh, we'll talk some about the depth and breadth and determining the depth and breadth of the lesson plan. We'll also uh, talk about the lesson plan itself, how to uh, present it in course content, or uh, I should say how to use a lesson plan to present the course content. We'll talk a little bit about evaluation and evaluating the effectiveness of the lesson plan. So let's move right on. The talking about lesson plans is exceptionally important. Um, in this particular uh, lesson we're going to find out how to effectively use lesson plans to organize your teaching presentation. By going in with a lesson plan, it will help you be uh, very direct, very organized, help you have the guide that you need that's going to direct you through the lesson. A lot of your lesson plan can be documented in whatever software presentation, if you're using some type of software or something, or you can put it on your notes, kind of help keep you direct. So uh, it's also going to help you with assisting in the evaluation process. The evaluation process itself is based off of those objectives that you have written earlier on. So your lesson plan directs that. So you write your objectives. Your objectives are direct. They are a they are measurable, they are specific, and then you use those lesson plans, uh, those objectives to write your assessments towards the end, your quizzes. Uh, we'll talk some about the types of assessments um, that are available, whether it be a formative, a summative, um, and those kind of things. So we'll talk some of those. Uh, we'll discuss the purpose of lesson plans and um, some of those other things as well. So again, uh, lesson plans are exceptionally important uh, in providing the guide and outline for your material. It gives you time to, to prep, to think about uh, what you're going to do. Um, you're going to think about the topic you're going to teach and put it all together so that when you show up in class, you are prepared and, and ready to, to teach. Most of the time, entry-level instructors, like I spoke, uh, said earlier, they're not going to have to do lesson plans. A lot of the lesson plans that we do are already designed, and you basically take those lesson plans, adopt them as your own. You may tweak them a little bit, but uh, from there, you know, um, you don't necessarily, as an entry-level instructor, don't necessarily have to do a lot of lesson plan writing yourself. The purpose of the lesson plan is, again, your guide. It's the framework for... Uh, what you are getting ready to teach, it helps uh, to keep you on, on task. And especially when you are teaching material, you've got quite a bit of material to cover in a short amount of time. It keeps you on task. Make sure that you cover all of the material. You are able to, rather than 
go on the fly and teach on the fly. You are able to prepare, take plenty of time to think about what you want to teach and get that information together uh, well in advance, hopefully, so that when you show up for class, you're good to go and, and ready to teach. The one thing to keep in mind is that the lesson plan itself should not be used in lieu of preparation. It's your job as the instructor, again, to make sure that you have uh, prepared and you research the material that you're going to speak on. Remember that you need to make sure that you know the topic that you are teaching, not just the topic that you're teaching, but you also need to know the depth of the topic. You need to know how, how wide that is, the breadth of that topic, Know the level at which you are going to teach and always one or two levels above that. That way the advanced students, you can give them morsels of information so that you don't keep them bored. But uh, also on top of that, it helps you to know if a question is asked, knowing a little bit more than, than you need. It helps you to know what to, how to answer that question because you know a little more about the topic and whatever the question is, how that's going to affect things further down. Um, lesson plans come from a variety of different areas. Uh, the National Standard Curriculum used to be out, had all the lesson plans were already completed for you. Uh, state EMS offices will create them. A lot of your level two instructors, mentor instructors, people like that can do it. Your publishers will have them. There are different organizations that put them together, national associations, all those different things are places where you can get lesson plans as well. So part of your lesson plan, one of the first parts of your lesson plan is called the needs assessment. Now I talk about instructional design earlier and what I want to show you is, I want to talk about for just a second is in instructional design, one of the first things in the instructional design process is what's called the analyze phase and I'm going to pull it up here for us. The instructional design phase starts with the analyze. It's called ADDIE, A-D-D-I-E. That's the model that instructional designers use by and large and what that is is A-D-D-I-E. That's analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate and that's part of what goes into lesson plans you analyze the learners you design the material you develop your material you put it into place and then you go back and evaluate that material and evaluate how it was delivered uh, and how effective it was so that's that's just a real quick hit on instructional design and the ADDIE model but by knowing that it will help you kind of understand a little bit more about what lesson plans are. So in the analyze portion that is what uh, we call the needs assessment and basically what that is is that's where you determine who's coming, what what the level of the audience is, their education level, who they are, where they're coming from, their backgrounds, all that different information helps you piece together material that you're going to talk about. Um, you need to know the age, the uh, as, as basically as much as you can you can about them because the more you know about your target audience and the things that they have in common, the easier it is for you to tailor the education to the audience. A perfect example is if you're going to teach CPR to uh, fifth graders, then you know you know their average level of education obviously is through the fourth grade up into the fifth grade. So when you go in to talk with them, you're going to talk a little differently. You're not going to use big big terminology and those kind of things. You'll, you'll talk specifically to your audience. So that's part of that needs assessment, knowing who that is. So that actually starts with a lesson plan. So you, you determine who they are and you know, all those different things so that you can uh, try to make sure you deliver the lesson plan designed specifically for your, your learners. Um, other things that you want to look at are the prerequisites uh, for the material that you're going to teach. And again, this gets more into uh, especially your level two instructors that are actually designing uh, topics. But 
things like entrance tests. A lot of times you'll see this, especially if you look at uh, curriculum courses, college courses, you'll see that in order to take English 212, you have to have already taken English 111. And that's part of those prerequisites. That is designing a material to make sure that the learners or you're setting your learners up for as much success as possible because when they enter the course using the English as an example in order to be successful in an English 212 course they had to have learned the concepts that they will learn in English 111. Same thing in mathematics you can't start working algebra until you understand basic math so in order to do algebra you have to know basic math so you see that all the time in lesson plans it'll say target audience is this this or this it'll design uh, or it'll say in order to take this course you must score a certain level in in pre-tests or whatever it is so that's basically what uh, setting up your prerequisites are also in your lesson plan you set up your technology requirements so that learners show up for class that um, are prepared and you show up knowing what material that you're going to need in order to deliver your your topic so uh, again you write as much of that uh, information down as you can Again, your needs analysis, uh, it's, it's quite in-depth, and if you pull the uh, national educate, the educating uh, instructors and the national curriculum for that, you can get really in-depth for that. And again, we'll talk more about that in like a level two assessment. You're welcome to dig as deep as you want. Uh, your needs assessment does, it digs down into where you get into the gender, race, the ethnic backgrounds, even their socioeconomic area that they're coming from because again a lot of that just boils down to the more you know your learner the better off it is and the easier it is to design a specific topic or design that course specifically for your learners Now we talked a little bit about cre creating your objectives and writing those objectives. Remember the three different domains that we talk about, the cognitive domain, which is the one that we largely teach to. Uh, generally your stand and deliver classes, those are taught to the cognitive domain. Then there's also the psychomotor domain. So what physical skills, what skills that include gross body movements, fine body movements, speech behaviors, those kind of things that are important in order to be successful in this particular topic. So uh, those are brought in. And of, of course the most largely overlooked and, uh, or I'm sorry, the most largely overlooked domain is that affective domain. And again, that's the one where it deals with everything from professionalism to your the way you carry yourself, the the manner in which you carry yourself, your personal hygiene, your ability to interact and engage other people, empathy, and all those different things. So that is the affective area. So that also goes into the design of your lesson plan. Now the lesson motivation is Usually you can come up with some type of activity or something to help motivate the students. There are all kinds of different ways of doing that. Sometimes you can use things such as a video, especially like a drunk driving video if you're getting ready to discuss the alcohol use, alcohol abuse, um, and those kind of things. You know, all kinds of different things to get people motivated. There are multiple different ways to motivate learners um, and different areas that do motivate them. There are intrinsic areas, there are extrinsic areas that motivate them. And sometimes learners are motivated because they want to learn a particular topic. CPR, for example, they may have been touched by 
some family member who went into cardiac arrest and they were not able to do anything, so they have a personal connection to it. Um, other times, you know, people have other personal reasons why they want to, they just want to learn how to do certain things. So that uh, those different types of motivators are there. So being able to understand that and tap into that really helps uh, design your lesson. So again, you can custom tailor the lesson for people. In your lesson plan, you want to put a recommended list of equipment and supplies so you can have that out. Again, if you're designing a lesson plan for yourself, that's one thing because you kind of already have an idea how you're designing that. But keep in mind, if you teach and you teach a lot and you have a long career in teaching, the more lesson plans that you actually collect and write up, the easier it is for you to go back, look back at that later on, and decide, well, you know, when I taught that class, this went really, really well. So you can highlight that. And in things that didn't go so well, you can go, yeah, that didn't go so well, so let's change that. And that's part of that evaluation process there at the end where you're able to evaluate. But by having the lesson plan and having that list of equipment, because if you teach the class once a year, then you know it, it really saves your time later on when you revisit that lesson plan so that you're not designing from scratch. Now on the other side of that, it makes it much, much easier when you go in before class to get your equipment together because you already have a nice list of the equipment that you need, the supplies that you need, so you can put all that together. Equipment supplies, that's everything from your supplies, your mannequins, your overhead projectors, if you need a whiteboard, if you were talking about doing some type of activity with them that's going with your students that's going to require you to use a note card, index cards for everybody, you have to make sure that you've got all of that stuff. So that's where that comes from. Always keep in mind um, one of the things that I stress is make sure you plan for failures, have a backup plan. And some of the best instructors have backup plans for their backup plans. So if you plan on using your equipment, especially electronic equipment, overhead projectors, computers, um, always make sure you have a backup plan for that because those are notorious for going down. It's not uncommon, depending upon the uh, venue that I'm going to, to speak in, if it's a large venue with, you know, that's extremely important, it's not uncommon for me to carry two or three different computers and also to have a backup of my presentation in on a thumb drive that I keep with me. And that way if I have an issue I can quickly switch to another computer or use a thumb drive and the local computers. Also just having your notes and things already printed out will help things uh, go much faster as well. So you can do that especially, or I'm sorry, if you have your notes, have those kinds of uh, things available to you, then if the if your presentation fails, if your software, computer, electricity, whatever the case may be, if that fails, then you can always result back to the old-fashioned notes and teaching from your notes. In your lesson plan, you also want to talk a little bit, you want to look at the depth and breadth of the material. There are several different ways of looking at it. Uh, some, some people talk about, in the if you look at the National Standard Curriculum, it talks about uh, basic level under, the basic level of understanding, which it calls as a level one. And that's a very brand new information. They're just starting to develop a new skill. It re generally requires quite a bit of feedback from the instructor. Uh, the intermediate level is what they call a level two. These are students who are connecting knowledge uh, that they've learned in the basic level and they're connecting it with uh, knowledge that they gain through experience. So they're really starting to put some things together. And then the advanced level of understanding is level three. And that's where students uh, have begun to function where they don't really need supervision they really start to understand and grasp the material. Uh, they're able to have the instructors serve more as just a facilitator, less teaching, and just allowing the students to 
go through and participate and learn the skills, perform the skills. So those are three different levels of understanding that you'll see in that national curriculum as well. Okay, when you get to the point that we talk about analyze, design, develop, implement, and evaluate, part of that evaluation portion is also done in the design phase, and that's how you evaluate students' ability to perform certain objectives and tasks. And your objectives, again, are specific, they're measurable. Remember that acronym SMART, those SMART objectives, specific and measurable. That is, once you write a specific objective that is measurable, then the measurement is totally up to the designer. When you're writing your lesson plan, you can decide how you want to measure those particular objectives. A lot of times those are done in a couple of different types of evaluations, one of which is the formative evaluation. Now formative evaluations are less stringent. They are a lot of times your self-assessments, your self-checks, things where they don't necessarily, students don't necessarily feel as if they're being assessed or they're low pressure assessments. Then you get into your summative evaluations. Summative evaluations are more the end of test valid uh, assessments or end of course assessments, assessments that carry grades, those kind of things are more of your summative evaluations. There are tons of different ways that you can evaluate. You can do it through surveys, you can ask questions. Of course, we're all familiar with the multiple choice questions where true, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank, those types of assessments. But there are other types of assessments that are out there as well. If we talk about online classes, you've got assessments from having students engage in discussion forums and going in and assessing their knowledge through the discussion forums and the talks or the information that they're sharing back and forth in the discussions. There's also the having students write papers, write um, different different things that you can do with with that where you have them submit papers. You can do assessments through having them do skills and watching them do skills. You can have them assess each other, have them assess themselves. So it's just a matter a lot of times of having the students re-engage the material to help kind of drive it home. So again, all kinds of different ways of doing that. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about evaluation techniques and how to, how to assess uh, the students' mastery of objectives. We'll do a little bit more of that a little bit later on. But ultimately what you want to do is you want to get the information from the students you want to um, document student performance as much as you can, especially if we're talking about skills per participation. Document that. Provide the student with feedback. Let them know how they did, how they can improve. We'll talk more about remediation later on in another module, but let the student know. Give them that information up front. Let them know how they, how they performed and then what they can do to meet whatever standard it is that you're trying to get them to meet. Give them the feedback, let them evaluate it themselves, let them under, help them to understand where where they're not quite meeting the the goals and help guide them to being able to master those goals. There are obviously, like I said, the written evaluation tools, uh, tests and quizzes, those kind of things. Your objectives are again the foundation for those those tests. If you write test questions for every objective and they're valid test questions, they're written appropriately, then you will accomplish the vast majority of your goals. There are all kinds of different ways of doing it, multiple choice, matching and true, false, fill in a blank, short answer, essays, all those are ways of assessing through some type of test or quiz, but again, what's most important is that you are making sure that the objectives are being met, and you as an instructor, at the end of the day, if you sat down with every one of those students and looked at those objectives, you have some method of being able to say, okay, I saw this student perform these skills, I discussed with this student these topics and was able to 
extrapolate from that discussion their knowledge base of that topic and am able to say that the student did these objectives and that's what's important you start with objectives you end by assessing those objectives so everything's built around those objectives can't stress that enough especially if you're teaching and you're trying to prep somebody for a state test for some other national design test or just any other test that was designed it was designed through a lesson plan in that lesson plan it had objectives and those objectives are outlined and taught through the lesson and then at the end there should be some form of assessment and that assessment should be tied directly to those lessons or to those objectives and that's how you make sure that the students met the goals and met the the outline that you had for them. So wrapping things up again a lesson plan is really nothing more than just a course roadmap that's going to help you as the instructor to prepare your your lesson. Again a lot of those things as an entry level instructor are going to have all of that information already there for you but if you write your own if you want to take them and adopt them or change them and adapt them to fit your needs then that's basically what the lesson plan does it starts with that needs assessment to determine the the topics the material who your learners are how are you going to assess it all the different items that you need for the lesson so you basically go through the lesson you you put in your head the way you want to do things think of the way you want to set the classroom up do you want to engage the students in discussion? Do you want to split them out into groups? All those different things are built into that lesson plan, the time assessment, and all of that. That's how we do it. So I'm going to switch over here, and I'm going to show you a, an example. Uh, in your course, I, will, I have loaded up a sample lesson plan. There's two different types that are in there, or there's two different lesson plans that are in there that are samples. There's the one sample that has the material for you, and then there's also the one for you to use as a template for your assignments when you create your lesson plan. That's what you're going to use to create that lesson plan. So if you look at the one that has the information already on it for you, which is, should be this one right here. Here we go. And this is the basic airway refresher. That is the sample lesson plan. You can see where we identify who the target audience is, who uh, we outline the cognitive ob objectives, the psychomotor objectives, and then the affective objectives. We outline the supplies and equipment that we need, then get into the personnel that we need. That is how many instructors are you going to need? Uh, is it going to be just you? Is it going to be a lecture? Is it going to be skills component those kind of things then there's the motivational activity determine what activity you want to do whether that's some type of group work whether that's some type of assignment that you want to do whether you want to turn all the lights off and come in flip the lights on and do something that just captures and captivates everybody and then helps to motivate them to learning the material those that information is again something that you can do to help motivate them. Again, remember there's intrinsic and extrinsic motivators that students are going to have. So you want to try to tap that in so that it helps you to, or tap into that so it helps to personalize the class, personalize the lesson, and makes things easier for you to develop a custom quality lesson. In that lesson plan, there's also the class setup, determining the uh, how you want to set it up, where you want to put people, if you want to split students out, those kind of things. You'll also have the material, your didactic material, which is generally an outline of the material and how you're going to cover it. Remember you want to summarize things. You teach things in that particular that method where you tell the students what you're going to tell them. You go through and tell them the information and then when you get done you tell them what you told them and when that's finished you go back in and assess the students ability to do the things that you said again those measurable objectives that you started everything with 